Ten past seven is our time on a beautiful Wednesday morning. It is the Daily Dose, your morning glory. You are catching us on NRTV and we are on DSTV channel 288. You are also catching us on various other platforms, including the DTT. Welcome to it. This is our I Need a Doctor segment. Uh, and, you know, it is always our thrust to make sure that we are physically and mentally healthy, um, that we are aware of... Uh, uh, our surroundings of uh, situations that might affect us, uh, might uh, might affect colleagues, neighbors, friends, and uh, we are well equipped to manage. And uh, as is our tradition, we have this morning our resident uh, shrink, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tendai Victoria, this morning, and we are talking about something that I am concerned that we now use very loosely tonight. Good morning. Good morning, Farid. So, um, today we want to talk about bipolar disorder. Right. And I think, and I have been guilty of this, and when you said you wanted us to talk about this, I really had a pause moment. Because okay. I realized that a lot of us now use it very, almost offensively. Right. So, uh, if somebody happens to be in a bad mood or somebody behaves out of character, and a bipolar. Mm. It's a chi as an bipolar. So we've <laughs> ta what's the word? Tari visa chire mera sort of. And it almost feels like we're ridiculing those that are actually uh, going through and dealing with this condition. So for the purposes of those of us who have been ignorantly throwing the term around, please explain to us what bipolar disorder is. Okay. I like what you said before, though, Fari. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with that totally. A lot of people have, you know, have been so guilty of, you know, just loosely using, you know, bipolar, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff, especially for, um, I will not mention names, but, you know, certain celebrities that we feel, you mm -hmm. know, you have a lot of bipolar. But with any mental disorder, you need to fit in, uh, you know, certain characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one thing. You need to fit in certain symptoms, you know, and it depends on the number then we know that you actually are you know mm. diagnosed in this criteria so in terms of bipolar we have bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 okay. and uh, both are characterized by major mood swings mm -hmm. right and um, uh, they have depressive episodes mm -hmm. so in this mood swings we're talking about our elevated uh, behavior they are very hyper in their energy mm -hmm. there's that psychomotor Ag agitation mm -hmm. they always want to be up and about mm -hmm. there's that pressure to always keep talking mm -hmm. um, there's no need for sleep they feel quite rested after only about three hours of oh, wow. of sleep eh? and I know that there are a lot of um, parents who are struggling with children because sometimes with bipolar it can be triggered by drugs mm -hmm. you know or alcohol use and their children are always up Mm -hmm. You know, so then, you know, we can uh, consider bipolar. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then they're very irritable and sometimes get into very risky behaviors. Mm -hmm. And this is like someone um, eating up all the inheritance or, wow. you know, getting into very promiscuous sexual uh, activities that they'll totally regret after the episode has passed by. Mm -hmm. And um, so once they hit that high, um, and with mania, um, they'll have about, um, it will last about a week. Wow. And then with hypomania, which is bipolar 2, will last about four days. And then they hit an all-time low. Mm -hmm. So once they, they've gone up, then the next minute, you know, we're noticing, you know, they're depressed, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they don't feel like going outside or doing, uh, you know, the activities they used to find uh, pleasurable. They're isolating, they're feeling very hopeless, and sometimes can be very suicidal. So hypomania is is where it's a dip in mm. all the other things that you you've spoken about so where mm -hmm. it was excessive sleep it's now more sleep okay so hypomania and mania mm -hmm. we're talking about how they reach their low they oh. i'm sorry they're high oh okay. this is when they do not feel like sleeping okay yes so the difference between mania and hypomania is just in the duration but they have the same symptoms oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So our mania has about, uh, it will last about a week, and our hypomania will last about four days. And then after that, they'll hit the all time low then when they, they revert to depression. The low. It's literally depression after that. So, uh, is there, 
Because I'm, I'm imagining mm -hmm. how difficult. Is there a, a gap? Mm -hmm. Is there a period of, um, for lack of a better word, normalcy where they're functioning uh, from day to day? Or is it just constantly a transition from the high mm -hmm. to the low? Is there, I hope, a rest gap mm -hmm. where they're functioning as normal? Okay. And if so, what then triggers the high? Okay. So unfortunately with a bipolar, this is a lifetime disorder. Mm. So once um, it you know, uh, starts, uh, if you don't get medication and the necessary help that you need, so you need to, the medication and you need that psychotherapy. If you don't get that necessary help and then you know, you're in trouble, you know, which is why it's very important for just, you know, the community and friends, family, just to be able to to get that person um, the necessary help mm -hmm. that they need. Because like I was saying, that um, almost feels like it's something that's just ongoing. Mm -hmm. And funny thing about uh, bipolar uh, patients is they actually like the time that they're in um, that hypomania and mania because they feel they can function more. You know, their they're brain is more. very alert, they're very creative. So you have some who actually know about their condition, right, and are taking medication and will um, deliberately stop taking medication so they may function at their highest. Wow. Yes. And that, that seems dangerous. Though. Very dangerous. So um, in terms of treatment, you did mention medication. Mm -hmm. um, is medication the only form of treatment? What does the treatment regime for somebody with bipolar look like? Okay. So um, we usually like to make sure that uh, some is getting not only medication but mm -hmm. also psychotherapy because with mental health issues once you're just medicating you're not really dealing with the reason mm -hmm. behind um, you know the issue and um, we want to uh, psycho use psychotherapy in terms of you know talk therapy um, for like we'll use something like cognitive behavioral therapy for mm -hmm. someone who has now reached the depressive stage mm -hmm. in their bipolar condition and help them deal with that and then when they're in their highs look they they get psych uh, psychotic you know mm -hmm. in this stage they hallucinating they have lots of uh, delusions of mm -hmm. grandiosity where they feel like they're the messiah or someone very very special you know mm -hmm. I'd like to actually um, consider that for you know that doctor in South Africa yes please yes. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Matthew we will discuss that another time <laughs> but um, there were definitely delusions there where he really felt that you know he, it, he in was his a mind doctor. it was true it was true. So, you know, you have that with uh, bipolar patients where in their highs, you know, they have those delusions where they can feel the, like, look, they're the first lady, they're married to the president and, you know, all that. And you can't bring them out of that. That's what they believe. So in those cases, then medication is very necessary. And then remember, they are struggling to sleep. Mm -hmm. So they need, we, they need the medication that will help them with that, you know. Okay. And you know the different medications, there's lithium that they can take, carbamazepine to help them sleep, and so much more. But uh, like I said earlier, we like to also use psychotherapy so that we can deal with you know, the deeper issues that they're dealing with. All right, I'm gonna take you back a little bit because we've just spoken about treatment. Um, but how do you, because we've seen all these symptoms, right? right. And there's somebody, because this is what we do, we self-diagnose, somebody's mm -hmm. ticked off and they, they've suddenly decided, okay, I think maybe I'm bipolar. Right. Although we do know that some of these uh, symptoms also um, cross, uh, relate with other conditions. So mm -hmm. what is the process of diagnosis? How do you, if I present myself and say, listen, I've seen some of these things that were said about bipolar, I feel mm -hmm. this is me, what is the, are there specific tests, are there scans that are done? How do we get to a bipolar diagnosis? Okay. To be honest, um, we're very highly unlikely to get someone come in and actually say, um, you know, I've got these issues. Usually, mm. it's because um, they're failing to function in society. Mm. They're getting in trouble with the law. So they're in this episode. So we usually have people bringing, whether it's a relative mm -hmm. or their friends uh, or an employee that they feel is out of control mm. or out of their mind. So they bring them in and um, usually, 
sitting down and speaking to someone who's in that hypomania or many episode is almost impossible mm -hmm. because you know they're so agitated they're moving up and about so distractible so we will rely on the information that we're given by um, whoever has brought them in mm -hmm. and we're able to notice that no this is definitely bipolar you know with certain uh, screening of you know questioning and how long you know durability how long has it been going on for then we know okay what exactly are we dealing with here uh -huh. so yeah all right um and then you know i think part of uh why we have not seen a lot of people like you said uh Wakawanda are brought by friends and relatives mm -hmm. but then we also have the other side where we see all these things that you have spoken about the mm -hmm. sleeping patterns and then coming back down into uh, de de uh depression and we've seen it with uh, workmates uh, mm -hmm. And it comes down to Anunetsa, Anodada, yes. Akajainswa. How do we get that mindset out of what conversations mm. do we now need to start having in the workplace, in our homes, mm. so that we are more alert? Because people are suffering and we've put it down to those things. Anunetsa, Akajainswa, Anodada, Anemamud. What conversations do we need to start having? Okay. I think what the society uh, needs to push for, especially I'll speak about uh, Zimbabwe, is to be aware and uh, appreciate and accept that mental health is health, mm -hmm. right? And that people are dealing with a lot of things. Um, certain people have stuff that they have um, been born with, you know, hereditary issues, you know, genetic issues. And uh, I think we just need to appreciate that. And some are just dealing with a lot of trauma, stuff that has happened to them in their childhood. Mm -hmm. And to accept that and not be so quick to judge. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the government needs to work more on a lot on um, just uh, destigmatizing um, mm -hmm. mental health and uh, psychoeducating the uh, the nation, the communities, the schools, the same way we did with, with HIV. Mm -hmm. You know, it even went down to our chiefs, mm -hmm. you know, destigmatizing it with, you know, just, you know, the general communities in the rural areas. So that's exactly what, ne what we need to do because right now, you know, we still have this um, thing of, you know, over-spiritualizing things mm -hmm. and not only blaming, you know, like what you're saying in workplaces, Kungoti, Anonita, because that's not that's not the thing. There could be actually a bigger reason, you know, that we can't see because the brain is such a complicated thing and there's always a reason why certain people behave the way that they do. So in workplaces, uh, even in schools, um, I mean, I'm uh, speaking to a lot of people and I'm realizing they're dealing with a lot. I mean, mm. we've got bipolar in schools, mm. you know, students. How do teachers then deal with, Identify. you know, they, oh, with um, students, how do they deal with, you know, students like that without uh, stigmatizing or actually not being afraid, you know, even in the workplaces and stuff. So we need as much um, mental health professionals going out there and just having this discussions with schools with workplaces with people with the communities even at the lowest level and just explaining those mental health conditions and just removing the stigma and the discrimination that comes with that and I thank you so much. It is always such a pleasure. And I like what you said at the end. And I hope we caught that. That the same effort that we put in when we were uh, doing our HIV AIDS campaigns, we saw posters in workplaces. There were discussions. There were workshops. Uh, what do we look out for? Do our uh, educators know uh, how to pick out kids with special needs or kids that are bipolar. Even in the workplace, our HR departments equipped to understand that Muamshande has kuneza, has kuva stubborn, kana kuva but there is there are things that are going on. So I think these are conversations we really need to continue having, uh, that we need to get professionals even to help us identify, speak to department heads, speak to uh, you know workers so we understand what bipolar is. And for those of us that have been irresponsibly just labeling everybody bipolar because they happen to have a mood swing or they have, sometimes it's menopause actually. Exactly. We're going to discuss <laughs> menopause next time. Great. But anyway, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you picked up something. Always grateful for Tendai uh, for coming through and sharing her invaluable knowledge with us. And we hope that you pick up on something. We head to a break, but don't go away. When we come back, the Weird and Bizarre Awesome is back because we're going to be doing Weird and Bizarre. <laughs>